Hello, my name is Jenna Bosiger, and you're watching Cryptic Cryptid's YouTube channel. On this episode, I decided to continue on looking at each individual state for a correlation between cryptids, mounds, giants, and petroglyphs. Ohio has so many things going on. I was overwhelmed. Too many amazing places to name them all. And it's not just mounds. There's so many giant skeletons that have been found in Ohio. I'm looking for a correlation between giants and mound builders. And I didn't find a correlation. I found a connection. Forget about a correlation. I found a direct connection um, the mound builders and the giants were definitely the same because they didn't just find giant skeletons nearby they found them in the mounds directly inside of the mounds so they were the ones making these giant earthworks it makes sense that giants made giant art I also didn't get to all the petroglyph sites i only got i just i'm gonna mention three that stood out to me and i know there's a lot more i just know it and there's just so many things happening in ohio and what's interesting is they're all kind of happening in the southern half of ohio another thing that ohio and this research proved to me is a motive and a reason to cover up evidence of giants because if they acknowledged that there were giants that they were building these incredible earthworks they were you know this incredible undiscovered species like this guess what no one would be allowed to farm to build to do anything in the entire half of southern ohio would be like an archaeological site where no one is allowed to do any hunting anything at all i mean there's just so much there and it's just like mm, nobody's talking about it but i am so let's talk about what i found and like i said i broke it up into four sections cryptids mounds giants and petroglyphs and starting with the cryptids and one of them that's very well known, very popular, has had a movie made after her, and you can get t-shirts made after her, is Bessie. And Bessie, they think she's related to Nessie in Scotland. And Nessie in Scotland, they say, is like a plesiosaur. And I really don't think that that matches the descriptions of Bessie. Because Bessie would appear to be more amphibious, meaning able to walk on both land and be in both the water and the land equally. And there was a name for this creature way back in the day, and they called them the underwater panthers. And there's petroglyphs of the creature in the area. And what's interesting is that, okay, so you would think that if this is an amphibious creature, there would be sightings of the creature on land as well, right? Well, sure enough, there are. There is the Loveland Frogman, which has been spotted along the Ohio River near Cincinnati. And that creature has been seen more than more than a few times along and just next to Loveland is Mill Creek. And there's the Mill Creek monster, which is said to be this amphibious creature coming from the Ohio River. And the Ohio River, well, what can we say about the Ohio River? You could spend a lifetime just getting into whatever is in the Ohio River. There's so much going on there. It runs all along the border and along some of the right side next to Kentucky and West Virginia. And all along there, there have been reports of some sort of amphibious 
humanoid creature. And what I think is that underneath the Ohio River, there's likely an entire subterranean world that exists. You know, caves, underground cave systems and tunnels, and who knows what is living in there. Because I do remember hearing about another lady that was attacked by a creature in the Ohio River and that he had left some mud on her that had been brought from the absolute depths of the deepest part of the Ohio River. And um, so, you know, there's been numerous reports of creatures like that. There's also the Minerva monster, which has been a well-documented um, sightings of this creature have been going on for a long time. The military was involved. It was a big deal. And so much so that it's got its own name. And that's not the only one with its own name. There's also the Ohio Grassman. And I think that he's pretty much resides in the Salt Fork National Forest there. And there's been tons of sightings of the Ohio Grassman. And he got his name from the elaborate grass mounds that he makes um, on the ground. And, you know, what I wonder is in the center of those massive mounds, is there maybe some entrance to the underground world that they, I think that they sleep in during the day. So lots and lots of cryptids all over the state of Ohio. And, you know, everything's going on along the Ohio River. That place must be so amazing. Let's go to the mounds now. So moving on to the mounds in Ohio. These, this is a list of the mounds in Ohio. And all I did was just look at them and there were certain ones that I remember. And those are the only ones I'm really going to be getting to. And there are just so many that I did not even get a chance to look at. But you could literally spend a lifetime happily studying this stuff. But I'm going to mention Serpent Mound because Serpent Mound is a three foot high pre, it says this, it says it's a three foot high prehistoric effigy mound on a plateau on a crater mound along Ohio Brush Creek in Adams County, Ohio. It's the world's largest effigy. And it likely sits in the middle of a crater on the inclined center of a crater where a meteor hit 250 million years ago. I mean, okay, that's, that's pretty amazing. And that's just an amazing thing in itself. So what an amazing sight, you know, not to mention there have been giant skeletons uncovered in this area. These are giant earthworks. They were made by giants. There are giants inside of them. And the reason they've been covered up and the reason that nobody wanted anybody to know about the existence or of giants is because it, it would have made it hard to take over the land and start farming it and, and handing it out to everybody to do with all the artifacts and stuff, you know, as they want, as they wished. You know, most of the people that found the giant skeletons were farmers that just acquired land. And if we would have, if we would have publicly acknowledged the existence of this ancient, ancient race of giants, you know, we wouldn't have been able to bulldoze through a lot of the stuff we bulldoze through. And that's the truth. That's the motive. Because Ohio is literally, it's an outdoor museum of giant artwork made by giants. And it takes up the entire southern portion of Ohio, all along the Ohio Riverbed. That land should not be occupied. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I would like to live there. Don't get me wrong, you know. So I'm kind of being hypocritical because, I mean, I would love to live there. But, you know, it's probably... So Miamisburg is one of the largest, is one of the two largest conical mounds in eastern North America. It's a burial mound built by the people 
that archaeologists call the Adena culture. There were Native Americans here before the Native Americans got here, okay? And those were the Adena and the Hopewell. And they were giants. And they made giant earthworks. And I don't know what exactly this means, but it, they call them group of pre-contact American Indians. I don't know what that means. Pre-contact American Indians. It's weird. So the Miamisburg Mound is 65 feet tall, 800 feet circumference, and it contains 54,000 cubic yards of earth. And excavations were done in 1869 and revealed that the construction of the mound was done by the Adena culture in several stages. Now, I've heard of the Seep Mound. Don't know if I'm saying that right. Because many artifacts have come from there. I mean, it's like a man-made mountain. We've got the Seep Mound. They call it a Hopewell House. It's got an amazing design to the city. And here we, they are excavating it and getting all inside of it and finding all kinds of things. This artwork looks so weird. It, it, it's got some Egyptian symbols almost. And, you know, some tells me that's not an elephant. It's probably a woolly mammoth. And, you know, first I thought these guys might be friends. But if you look in the one guy's hand, he is holding a head. So I guess that they are fighting with those knives that are probably pretty big. And some other things found in the seep mound. Lots of pipes to smoke out of. And, you know, this guy's w wearing the skin of a wolf, looks like. And then here's a face of possibly what they looked like. And then I found this copper artifact coming from Seep Mound. And guess what it looks like with no neck? It looks like Bigfoot. Another interesting place, ancient fort, because... It's just so weird. And here's a here's a stone circle. I like it because you can really tell how old this stone circle is by how deep these stones are into the ground. You know, a lot of stone circles, they just are sticking above the ground. But look at how deep this is into the ground. That's thousands of years old. It just keep going and going and going. Each one, individual, different, unique, special. I mean, these sites must be amazing. There's three petroglyph sites that I want to mention that stood out to me. But again, there's so many that I am not even getting to. The Leo petroglyphs in Ray, Ohio, and the Barnesville petroglyphs and Inscription Rock. So Inscription Rock is this piece right here, this rock. And it was found on a tiny little island in Lake Erie. And I'm so it's very old. I like petroglyphs because they tend to be older than pictographs. They also were a lot harder to make and, you know, probably withstand time much longer than a pictograph does. Now, the Leo petroglyphs contain 37 images of humans and other animals, as well as footprints of each. And one of the animals has horns, and others appear to be birdmen. Now, the Barnesville petroglyphs are interesting because they're like, they look like they're just um, footprints that were made naturally. But, I mean, I guess that they were carved in, but Barnesville, it really, you know, it really looks like they were actually walking around, but, you know, I guess they're carved in. I found this on the internet, some pictures from the Barnesville track rock in Ohio, and they're comparing them to Safe Harbor petroglyphs found in Pennsylvania. And the similarities are, you know, beyond co coincidental. They really are. And we're definitely getting two different feet. Splayed toes come from not wearing shoes. But P-toes, one, two, three, four, five. P-toes, 
you know, toes that look like pea pods, that's a very human, um, a sign of a human track with the toes like that. But this splay toe situation here, that's very Bigfoot. All right, let's talk about these giant, okay, it says, beware of that supersize Indian. That is the title. Underneath this picture, it says, burial plot, the burial place of an Indian, possibly from a prehistoric tribe, is believed under the curse in Harmony Road near the United Dairy Company. In 1985, country workers unearthed a mass burial tomb, but left the grave of what is believed to be the chief. So they left the mass grave and, and, and unburied the chief. Long since departed from their previously secure resting place, of course there aren't such things as spirits, but if there were, just think how long the, that Indian has had to get madder and madder at having his mass burial plot upended by a gang of whites. Out of this could come as unholy alliance, if you'll pardon the expression, of the spirits of whites and Indians. You can't help wondering how the early settlers might look at the might look at all the improvements. Oh my god. It says you can't help wondering how the early settlers might look at all the improvements. They can remember when you had to ride a ferry express across the Hawking River, whence the bridge, bridge stands now. And they remember when Captain Sil Silas Bingham had a horse posse mill, oh, had a horse powered mill there, and how they launched their flatboats, roared with pork, oh, filled, loaded with pork and other products for long voyages down the Hawking, Ohio, and Mississippi rivers. Later, Daniel Stewart had milk mill there and it was operated by the water power a dam built and according to old set old stories some of the best fishing in the country was to be found at the hawking near the mill the first athens post office was also built near the mill a bronze plaque at the millstone still marks the site all this might be disturbed unless someone steps in and sees to it that the Indian chief is left in place and the millstone with the, p with the plaque preserved where the old bridge is raised. Of course, most folks don't believe in spells and spirits and the like, and it is old-fashioned and ignorant and silly to think that an ancient Indian could haunt the place and cast a curse. Still, you can't help but remembering about the Chief Comstock and the curse he put on Point Pleasant, West Virginia, and all the floods they've had, and the bad fires, and of course the, still, the Silver Bridge disaster. That curse, after the white men moved old Cornstock's bones to make room for a new courthouse. Okay, now I'm going to go, I'm going to read some of the newspaper clippings from newspaper articles of the time. This was the CNN of the day. This was the reliable source that, of news where people got their information from. You know, the sources like the New York Times and stuff. It's just as legitimate then as it was now. And they're talking about giants being found over and over and over and over and over and over and over by everybody who's digging up the new land they just acquired. So let's go through and, you know, see where they're finding all these giant skeletons and how they, co how they coordinate with the mounds. Okay, skeleton of a giant that antedates Adam. Because in the Bible, the giants were there before Adam. I Miamisburg, Ohio, December 23rd. We don't have a date. But, you know, these are all from the 1800s and early 1900s. A discovery, the greatest scientific interest was made when the pickaxes of Edward Herbert and Kaufman of this place disturbed the long repose of a skeleton that had been buried for no one can tell how many thousands of years. And then this is a drawing geonastic skeleton of prehistoric American found in Miami Valley greater than any recorded giant okay and then just down the road we've got sorry if I didn't pronounce this right Chillicothe 
Ohio Giants and the mounds there, like they don't find the Giants nearby. They find them inside the mounds. So here's what the article says. Chickalos, Ohio, May 31st, 10 skeletons were found in two mounds by Dr. Loveberry, curator of the Ohio State University Museum. One that's of a great one that of a giant fully eight feet. It is the most notable find yet. All right, and then just, you know, all along the Ohio River. And it looks like the Ohio River was uh, bigger, too. You know, it looks like it's shrunk over the thousands of years. This article says, Giant skeleton found in bed of sand in northwest northwestern Ohio. Man was eight feet high. Bowling Green, Ohio, while excavating for sand for building. And that's all it says. So we got Bowling Green, Ohio. Here's from the New York Times, published November 21st, 1856. Skeleton of a giant found. A day or two since some workmen engaged in subsoiling the grounds of Sheriff Wickham at his vineyard in East Wheeling came across a human skeleton. Although much decayed, there was little difficulty in identifying it by placing the bones which could not have been, could not have belonged to others than a human body in their original position. The impression made by the skeleton on the earth and the skeleton itself were measured by the sheriff and a brother in the craft locale, both whom were prepared to swear that it was 10 feet, 9 inches in length. Its jaw and teeth were almost as large as those of a horse. The bones are soon are seen at the sheriff's office, Wheeling Times. And another one here says, Giant Skeletons unearthed at Athens, thought to have been Indians of gigantic proportions. Athens, Ohio. The skeletons of two Indians have been unearthed alongside the banks of Hawking River at Roach's Mill, one half mile east of Athens. The excavation was made under a large building a short distance from the bank of the river. Unearthed a few feet from the skeleton were many arrowheads, which no doubt were buried with the redskins when they were sent either when they were sent either by accident or natural death to the happy haunting grounds happy hunting grounds the skeletons were ev evidently those of gigantic men judging by the bones they could have measured less than seven feet in stature they could not have measured less than seven feet in stature the bones were in an excellent state of preservation the teeth being still firmly embedded in the maxillary bones Okay, and here's another giant bones found by sand pit digger near Cincinnati. Bones of a giant found, Akron, Ohio. Bones of a prehistoric giant were found in a newly discovered cave in the quarry near here. Although the bones of a bear were dis also the bones of a bear were discovered. The human bones of the the human bones of the giant are are of great value to scientists as the man must have been over eight feet in height. Here's another. Finds giant skeleton, St. Mary's, Ohio. The skeleton remains of a giant human were excavated by a dredge near Lake St. Mary Ca East Bank. The weight of the thigh bone is such that professional evidence was necessary to establish its human origin. Here's another one. Giants of Other Days. Recent discoveries near Serpent Mound, Ohio. Former Farmer Warren Cohen of Hillsboro, Ohio, while fox hunting, recently discovered several ancient graves. They were situated upon a high point of land in Highland County, Ohio, about a mile from the infamous Serpent Mound, where Professor Putnam of Harvard made interesting discoveries. As soon as the weather permitted, Cohen excavated several of these graves. The graves were made of large limestone slabs, two and a half of 
two and a half to three feet in length and a foot wide. These were set on the edge about a foot apart. Similar slabs covered the graves. A single one somewhat larger at the head and another at the foot. The top of the grave was two feet below the present surface. Upon opening one of the graves, a skeleton upward of six feet in length was brought to light. There were a number of stone Bacchetta beads and ornaments of peculiar workmanship near the right arm. Several large flint spears and arrowheads among the ribs gave evidence that the warrior had died in battle. In another grave, the skeleton of a man equally large, the right leg had been broken during life and the bones had grown together. The protruance at the point of union was as large as an egg and the limb was bent like a bow. At the feet lay a skull of some enemy or slave. Several pipes and pendants were near the shoulders. Giant Skeleton, Dayton, Ohio. The skeleton of a human giant was found in the gravel pit east of the city by W.C. Fry, the owner of this pit. He found it measured nine feet in length. The skull was six times larger than that of the average Caucasian. Professor Meltzer and Forsyth of the Steele High School believed the bones, and then it cuts off right there. So that's just a few. Ohio is basically a gigantic outdoor museum, runs all along the southern half of Ohio. It's an amazing state. It's got so many cryptids, so many legends of giants, so many skeletons found, so many mounds. It's got everything. And petroglyphs. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode on Cryptic Cryptids YouTube channel about Ohio and all the interesting things that are there. And please subscribe, like, and hit the bell. And I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.